Monday, March 16, 2020. Please stand for the flag salute. John, would you like to use? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law by posting a notice of this meeting on the bulletin board in the municipal building and by publication in the press of Atlantic City and the Atlanta County Record on January the 15th, 2020. Mr. Kane? Here. Mr. Gishard? Mr. Kurtz? Here. Mr. Patali? Here. Mayor Shanker? Here. Can we have a moment of silence for private reflection, please? Thank you. I'd uh, like to start off this evening. We have a guest presentation from the Atlanta County engineer updating us on the Cotton Mill Bridge. Where's the mic back there? Yes. Mic back there. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, could you do that, please? That'd be good. <laughs> Nothing personal. <laughs> six feet yeah yeah we're good yeah okay <laughs> all right can you hear me is this, is this being yep. picked up this okay being picked up thank you hi good evening uh my name is mark shorts i'm the county engineer for atlanta county uh, I'm, I'm with doug DeMayo. he's our supervising engineer for bridges and dams uh so we just want to bring you a briefing with regard to uh where we are with the cotton mill bridge if you recall some months back, John Peterson and I, uh, John being the, the, the uh, department head for planning and regional development, gave a brief presentation on where we were with a couple of the bridges. So we'll, we want to bring you up to date on uh, where we are with Cotton Mill. Obviously, there's been some activity out there and I'm sure everybody's noticed. So the contractor um, that was uh, given the award is Richard E. Pearson. Um, the designer uh, for the for the bridge, who also went and got all the permitting for us, um, is uh, JMT, and uh, they are going to be the, our inspectors on the bridge, uh, the day-to-day -day inspectors. Uh, Doug will be out there with his uh, staff on a regular basis dealing with with issues. Construction costs came in at um, six million four hundred and forty thousand six nineteen and seventy cents um, and uh, Pearson was the uh, qu qualified uh, and he was and they were the low bidder um, so the funding for that is coming from several sources um, which we have kind of stacked up uh, in order to fund this project um, and um, and some of that is with uh, county bond money not just uh, not just uh, local uh, bridge funds, so um, we, we put together the funding for that. We issued a limited uh, notice to proceed on January 31st, 2020. The reason why we issued that uh, permit was to get work done, in-water work done, prior to the uh, in-water work restri uh, uh, restrictions by the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, so we had to beat their deadline. Now we're not allowed to work in the in the um, <coughs> in the water at all. Uh, so that was issued on January 31st. The purpose of that is to get the uh, the barge in, in in and also get the pilings in that are the pilings necessary to build the utility bridge. A um, so mobilization happened for that for the caissons um, uh, March 20th um, and uh, or the mobilization to install the caissons March 20th. The pre-construction uh, pre -construction meeting was held on March 3rd and that was well attended. Uh, the meeting went well. I wasn't there. Uh, Doug was at the meeting and um, but the key thing here is is that 
the cooperation and communication that we want to have with the municipality, with the, uh, the police department um, is key in a project like this. We understand that there's going to be a detour and the, and the bridge is going to be closed for a year and a half. Um, so those are the key issues that we wanted to talk about. Utility work, um, the utility contractors are ready to start. Um, Doug had a meeting uh, this morning with Atlantic Electric and a couple of the other utilities and, and we're, we're moving forward. So the actual start date for the project was March 9th. I said there was, uh, there was basically kind of two, two uh, starts to the, to the project. Um, when I talked about in-water restrictions, just so you know, those in-water restrictions are from March 1st until June 30th. Uh, the 1st of July, we'll be able to go back in and actually do in-water work again uh, associated with the bridge construction. So the overall project, based on the, um, based on the, the start date um, that I mentioned, puts a substantial completion date for September 1st, 2021. That's the date the contractor has to have the bridge reopened. Uh, there'll, there'll be other work that they're going to do, but when we set the substantial completion date, that's really what that is. You gotta have the bridge open by that date. So that's a 541 day uh, cl uh, clock for them. Um, and then, um, then there's a final completion date, some other areas with regard to the actual bridge construction that they can do on the outside of that, clean up, um, you know, backing out of the job, those kind of things. And that, and that will bring us to November 14th of 2021. And then the, the contractor uh, we'll have so many days uh, and the consultant to finish the paperwork. And so we will have the submission of all the final documents so we can get final payments and everything by January 13th, 2022. The um, brief summary of the bridge uh, for the record, uh, the bridge, the overall length of the bridge is 105 feet. Um, the new construction is gonna have two spans the overall width of the, of the new bridge is 47 feet, two inches. That includes uh, curb to curb, 32 inches and uh, six foot sidewalks. Uh, so that's basically the basic description. Uh, this project obviously required uh, many, many permits uh, through the DEP. Um, and also uh, we had to go to historic preservation. Uh, so Doug, you have any details you want to tell, you, you want to talk about uh, with regard to that? No, any, anything. Um, the project, uh, the bridge actually will include, um, oh, sorry. <coughs> uh, the bridge would include the installation of 120 piles. Uh, that's for the two abutments um, the, and the center pier. Um, obviously, that's a going to take a while then they have to build both abutments the piers and then they could uh, erect the beams and do the rest a lot of the concrete work does have time frames that you have to wait before you can move on to the next step due to uh, curing I know a lot of people are always concerned about why is it, it takes so long to build a bridge but there's a lot of steps involved and there are things like waiting for concrete curing um, we are shooting for all utility work, the temporary utility work, which is going to be, I mean, technically it started now with the construction of the temporary utility bridge, uh, but we have gas, water, sewer, electric, um, Verizon, and Comcast that all have to move their utilities onto that utility bridge. That work should be done around June 30th so that we can start demolition July 1st once the inwater work restrictions are opened up yeah and then from there you'll see you know the bridge being constructed uh, towards the end utilities will then have to be moved or gas water and sewer will be moved back underneath the bridge and the aerial lines will be moved off the utility bridge and back up are there any specific questions with regard to anything that 
we just covered in this brief presentation. Are there any um, incentives or penalties built in to meet that 541 days? Absolutely. So um, there are um, liquidated damages for exceeding the substantial completion date of $1,500 a day. Uh, and then once they get to the final, uh, say they've completed the substantial, but they go over on the final, that's $1,000 a day. And then even in the paperwork, not cleaning up the paperwork so we can go through the, uh, the, the process of payments is, an, is $500 a day if they, uh, if they, if they don't meet the, those deadlines. So realistically, we're not going to see that bridge close until June 30th? No, I think it will be closing on uh, the 23rd of March for the utility work. Okay. And it won't be reopened uh, at all, that until the project's finished? Okay. So, uh, some people have asked, well, why, why are the overhead lines moving on to the utility bridge? And, and that's a very simple answer um, the cranes that need to work need, need the airspace they can't come within close proximity to um, the overhead lines the, those lines had to come down so the best way to do that is to put them on the utility bridge and go basically underground but they're not underground really but they're down uh, and then we have the, the airspace to uh, to work with cranes was there uh, was there some uh, my understanding is there were some studies done about how the uh, driving of the pilings and the work on the bridge would affect the uh, the uh, vibrations to do with like the uh, uh, Masonic Lodge, which is an old building. Is there anything that came out of that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's a contract for us to monitor uh, vibration through through the project. Um, so it's in numerous locations, uh, including I think one attached to the lodge. Is that right, Doug? Or in close proximity to the lodge. No, it's not there yet, but when, when they get to that kind of uh, construction, it will be monitoring through throughout. So there's a whole program that's going to be put in place. That was in the design and in the contract. Okay, thank you. What about traffic diversion? Um, how far out are we going? Well, the, uh, the, the the detour for the project is pretty simplistic. You know, it goes out to Route 4050 and wraps around, so all traffic um, needs to make that route around there. The bridge will be closed. Uh, one of the things that we're working on, and, and your uh, town engineer Steve has been working on, trying to compile a list of the businesses that might that will be affected off of Main Street. Uh, we're gonna we want to put the appropriate signage. Um, as part of that detour, demonstrating that these businesses will be open. Obviously, we're looking beyond our current issue right now, um, the, na the national issue of the coronavirus and closures, but to say that these businesses are going to be open, uh, we, we're going to have larger signage talking about businesses being open, and then we actually want to list uh, as best we can the businesses that ca will have access. So, um, and, and, the, and the same on the other side, uh, like from the other side, like Victor's or, or, or on the other side of the bridge. So we want to put proper signage up, notifying people that the local businesses are open, but that the, that the bridge is out. Okay. Do you have any plans to, um, you know, we've, we've had closures in the center of town before which have become a nightmare for the police department. So you are now going to cut off a road that relieves uh, Route 40 during the summer months, and it's going to be, do you have any plans to have any type of uh, law enforcement out there to ease that pain? Probably the answer is better um, um, actually answered by your police department. But we will, um, uh, we're going to, we have a lot of advanced signage that's going to go up. We have variable messages, bo message boards that we are going to, in, in advance, um, that are going to be out uh, before the bridge closes. Uh, even up on the pike, uh, the other side of uh, Weymouth Road. Um, and um, 
and 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 uh, you know we we we've been in communication with your police department. Okay. Would you like to? Yes, sir. We've uh, been in contact with the county and uh, been part of the uh, planning process for the pre-construction meetings, along with uh, Mr. Philippone, who's going to be the liaison with the construction and county. Department of Engineering to uh, keep everyone in contact on the municipal side. So in response to your question about the traffic, we've asked or petitioned the state DOT to increase the timing for three or four different uh, traffic lights along Route 40 to increase time about 15 seconds to allow more traffic to flow through the state highway system. We've also asked for increased signage on Weymouth Road coming from the Black Horse Pike to have the traffic go, turn right to head up towards uh, 40 and 606 by the Pantry Pride and start their detour there rather than, have, rather than having them come to the bridge and have to go out to 40 and 50. Uh, we've also asked for an additional VMS sign or message board sign to be placed by Weymouth Road and 322 to uh, direct traffic to not use that road if possible and to seek an alternate route. Okay, very good. We're also going to be assisting the construction company with uh, directing traffic in times when there is need for it until the closure. Once it is closed, there's not going to be a need for the police department. And we haven't really, through all of our meetings, determined an area where we need to have police direction. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Is there, um, is there any thought to putting a sign out by Malaga Road out in Buna? to kind of put people on the Malaga so they can go get on the Black Horse Pike instead of coming into town? I, without really having any uh, indication of what type of traffic would be impacted with that sign, I, don't, I would have to look into that a little bit further to see if it would really be influential to assisting with the detour, unless Mr. Philippone would uh, think differently. I think we should look a little bit into that before we ask for another sign, sir. Okay. Anyone else? Rodney? I remember from your last presentation that there was a limit on the vibration. Um, just out of curiosity, what happens if that limit is ex exceeded? Yeah, we, we talked a little bit about the, the, the contract uh, who will be monitoring, that will be monitored during construction. Vibration will be monitored. So we don't anticipate that there's going to be any issues, but we will be monitoring the uh, vibration in, in several different areas around the bridge. I'm sorry, did I pick that up? Was that close enough? Okay. Anyone else? I just think maybe we could, do you have any uh, artist renderings that we might be able to post on our website? We don't have any, um, like color renderings. Why don't, why, yeah, why don't we do this? Why don't we get it over to, to Steve and have, have you take a look at it and then, um, like, we I don't know how large the files are, but see if we can. I want to I make sure it's labeled properly so that uh, we'll look into that. Okay. Very good. Anyone else? Good. All right, well, listen, we want to thank you for coming in. I appreciate all the hard work you guys have done to try and make this as painless as possible, even though we know <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but thank you. Appreciate well, you coming out on night yeah, night we, tonight. We thank you for the opportunity, and, and whenever you need us, you know, let us know, and uh, we'll come back and, and give you a briefing. John Peterson wasn't able to be here tonight. It's okay. Uh, so he wanted to you know, say sorry he wasn't able to make it, but he would have been here. All right. Very good. Thank you. Again, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Uh, we move on to additions, deletions of the late agenda items to be considered for action tonight. We have three. 4B is a resolution authorizing the implementation of temporary guidelines for employee leave time sta and staffing related to the coronavirus. 7F is a resolution approving a change order number three, 2018 State Ave Improvement of West Jersey Avenue, phase two. Bid number 2019-03, it's an increase of $7,875.
In addition, A 8A is Horizon Retail Construction. It's a, uh, a licensed business registration. It's an out-of-state contractor. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, number two, early public comment on agenda items, excluding items listed for public hearings. We have anybody? No one, sir. Thank you. Uh, number three, we'll move on to the 2020 budget, 2020 municipal and capital budget presentations. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to thank the committee for uh, allowing me to make this presentation this evening. Uh, actually, this is one of the prouder budgets in my career that I've been able to introduce uh, to a, a governing body for the fact that it, uh, it's not where it's out of whack and I've got to do a lot of cutting or, or chopping. Uh, I have to give credit to uh, the mayor, deputy mayor, and Mike Jacobs uh, for what I consider a, a very uh, outstanding job in uh, putting together a, a very, very solid budget uh, on the short term with a 0% increase and secondly with a, with a really solid capital plan, um, not incurring uh, much more debt going into the year just to do some roadways and infrastructure work that needs to be done. Uh, but I'll get into it a little bit and you can, uh, if you have questions, just pop in as we go along if you have questions so we can uh, make sure that it's clear. So this is... Uh, Introduction. Here's what we're looking at: the summary of tax rates uh, for uh, the, the township, and, and what we do is we go through the whole uh, look at everybody understands, at least on a local level, the public understands that the municipality collects all the taxes for the uh, county library and uh, local schools and the regional schools. What we do is we collect it, and then we have to kick up. Uh, funds to them uh, and then we are the ones who uh, have to absorb any losses in taxes but you can see this year that the tax levy for the township has basically stayed the same uh, this year which is uh, a, lo a, lo a local purpose tax would be the 8.2 which is same as last year very reasonable in the sense of it, with the conditions changing in, in uh, the economy, uh, we, it's just a continuous solid, uh, solid tax rate. This is what the uh, local purpose tax is, what we uh, levy. Our levy for 20 is uh, 18,170, 18, I'm sorry, 18,170,807 uh, compared to uh, just a little bit increase of about $80,000 from last year. Uh, and what we're looking at assessed values of properties. The assessed values of properties at the bottom there actually increased by 0.58%. When you look at the real estate market, and you, that's a, a, not a bad, in, one bad year, one year increase uh, for a community. Uh, it means you've got a solid, solid real estate market here uh, for residential. Uh, maintaining that is that important with no loss. Most towns uh, between tax appeals, like you guys had a couple years ago. Uh, this is a, a solid real estate market for residential. Uh, how your tax dollar breaks down, uh, as you can see, school taxes take up 54.4% of your tax dollar. Uh, county tax 18.3, a local purpose tax is 27%, just over 27%. What do you get for that 27% of your tax dollar? Uh, well, this is first of all revenues. Revenues we, we have to in the state of New Jersey present a balanced budget. Uh, we are presenting a balanced budget of 28 million 344 uh, on both sides of the equation. So uh, we are in compliance with state statute that way. 
Uh, you can see over history, over um, the, the last 11 years, and how the increases of adopted budgets have gone up over the years. Uh, you, it's not outrageous in what you're looking at uh, over, over the last uh, 10 years, especially right after the bubble. You guys went do a heck of a job in, in 10, 11, 12, uh, when you had the tax appeal problems uh, and reduce, maintaining a, a reduced budget and working through it. Uh, I think we're more right now, well, with, with the uh, crisis we're having right now, I think we, we've got a flat market or potentially a recession. But over the last you know, uh, five or six years, uh, you've done very well, steady growth. Uh, Local taxes, your low, local tax revenue since 2009. Again, the, these are your increases. Uh, they go over, and you can see how they dropped during your, your uh, tough periods uh, and increased up over uh, into 2020. This is your debt history. To me, this is one of the most important things that a community has to look at, and this is why you have such a, a great bond rating, double, uh, double A plus, is the fact that your debt history uh, continues to go down. We're looking to drop it again, uh, another 500,000 this year with the payment. Uh, so it, it, looking at it from the outside, uh, you know, you went out into the bond market last year, did very well. Uh, again, the bond markets are gonna be down, so any debt, new debt we would get in sh on the short term on notes would probably be well under 1% uh, in, in for capital projects this year. Full-time employees, I know this is something that's monitored on a regular basis, and which is very important. Uh, we're at, we've been flat uh, over the last few years at 127 employees, uh, and, and I think that's important because that uh, gives you a stable community, gives you a stable workforce, uh, which is very important. Uh, this is the average taxpayer uh, your average house is assessed at $162,000, which is up a little bit from last year. Uh, and what a local tax payer will, a homeowner will pay uh, on local purpose tax is $1,432 for year, uh, just over uh, about $120 a, m a month uh, in local purpose tax. What do you get for the, here's how it breaks down. Uh, of those, of that $1,432, 859 is public safety, 265 is public works, uh, 129 is the solid waste, and 179 is the general government services. You say, what is general government services? General government services is the administration of the township, uh, the tax collector, the clerk, uh, the administrator, uh, the, the finance department, people who do the job on a day to day basis in the offices. Uh, I, solid waste is out the bid right now. Um, I, I want to point something out. <clears throat> There's comparisons a lot of times in local governments of, of what you pay uh, for certain things and what your, your total costs are. Uh, I will tell you that, just doing a quick comparison between Galloway and Hamilton Township, you must remember we pick up trash here. We, we pay a vendor to pick up trash. When you live in Galloway, each homeowner has to contract trash themselves. So that's a hidden cost over there that, you know, when they show the tax dollar in Galloway is a little bit less. Here, you're paying for that through your tax dollar, but you're not incurring that cost. So, so our rates are um, fair because we do do that extra service, which other communities don't. What do you get for your 859 in public safety? Obviously, uh, police protection. Uh, you've got a, a great volunteer fire department, EMS. Uh, it's, again, an outstanding job in the police department on a regular basis. Uh, this is your municipal courts, animal control, and LOSAP, which is your contribution for the volunteer fire department. Uh, almost a, a, it's a small pension type stipend uh, they get for the years of service. Uh, and I think that for uh, a community this size and what the services you're providing, 859 is a very fair number uh, on an annual basis. Uh, what do you get out of public works? Uh, I think your public works, again, another outstanding group of uh, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, street maintenance, street lighting. Remember, you've got to pay for street lights. People think that they're free for some reason, but they are, they're there. We pay for them. Uh, snow removal, which we've been very fortunate this year. 
uh, flood mitigation, uh, stormwater maintenance we must do, and uh, maintaining the parks is, is, is a substantial task, uh, that, which is done. Uh, again, this is your $129 for solid waste. Uh, I, I pick it up through, through container systems, uh, and uh, I think that that's done uh, very well through our present vendor. Uh, and again, our bids will be open on April 15th for, our, for the rebid. Uh, but Waste Management is, uh, is an outstanding company. Uh, we have general services, like I described. Uh, this is all, your, all of our office people and the people you see on a regular basis. Uh, operating surplus used for this budget. This is the, your fund balance is, is your surplus. Uh, basically what you do is each year you re regenerate a certain amount of, of excess funds in your budget and, uh, and you collect certain revenues, uh, what they call mis miscellaneous revenues in Myrna. And what you do is you build up your extra money and when you get to the end of the year, if you have money left over, you, you keep your tax rate down by utilizing part of your surplus. Uh, we, again, under $4 million we're, we're using this year. Uh, and we're still maintaining a balance of about 2.1 million in surplus, uh, which we have projected that we're going to be able to, uh, this, this year we'll be able to uh, replenish that surplus. So next year we'll be in the same condition. This is your play as you go program for capital costs. Uh, this, is, this is important because you're not incurring more debt on things you don't need to incur debt on. Uh, and, and this is unusual for most communities uh, in the state of New Jersey and all over the country. The fact that you look at, uh, you're paying for uh, fire equipment, you're paying for fire vehicles, and you're paying uh, and putting money aside for fire, emergency rescue. Uh, you have a total cost of about $867,000. Last year, you funded some police vehicles through uh, some ca capital side. This year, we're looking to do it through current fund. Uh, so we're not going to incur any debt on police vehicles this year. Uh, we, again, we're continuing to invest. You see in the, the vehicles and, and a, a very proud fire department, very good fire department. We're looking at uh, what in the 2020 budget, uh, we'll continue the payday as you go plan for, for capital uh, funds for public events, the Cove, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, holiday lighting, overtime supplies for the police and for the police department, uh, public works and uh, police services for the Halloween parade. And Arch, yeah, we had uh, talked, I think, to, it, it also includes the uh, public works and police services for the uh, hometown celebration. Yes, correct? that's correct. Thank you. Yes, that's included in the, in the line items of the department. Okay, itself. thank you. Okay, and you're looking at uh, budget pay increases for most employees between two and 3%. Uh, and this is kind of a, a number that's uh, hidden in the sense that uh, in the most recent approved contracts for police were just a little bit over 3%, but they are taking a reduction in uh, the way that, in their, or well, an increase to them in, in their copay, but a deduction to our cost uh, for paying for their health care. So this, to me, this is a very fair way to do it. Uh, and, and I think it's um, the first time I've seen it done that way and I, I think this is it, it creates a, a fair for both sides uh, what's not in the budget I would tell you there's no increase in taxes uh, there's no reduction in force we're not deferring any school taxes uh, and we're not reducing any services uh, loving your budget analysis that we have to do uh, as you can see revenues and appropriations have balanced over the years uh, and we were balanced out to the end of this year that the, the 28 million three three four this is a, uh, one of the new things that they're looking at in the budget uh, for projections this is over uh, five years and what you're looking at in projections over your next five years uh, I think this is important that we're, we're ch kind of changing our philosophy in government in the sense that we are looking at five-year budgets now and not just looking at uh, single-year budgets in the past. I think we've, we've been overly focused on the single year. Uh, this reflects uh, uh, a projection that was put together by 
uh, our team and the auditor in the sense that you can see what the increase is. Uh, again, this is a hypothetical five-year budget, uh, but you're not looking at substantial increases over the next five years that are going to put the town in any type of uh, burden. Uh, some of the things that are very, very unpredictable in these cost factors are uh, pensions. Uh, we've got a projected of 5%. Uh, that number is a variable determined each year actuarially by the state. Uh, we have no control over that. We're in the health insurance uh, state health benefits plan, again, 4%. Uh, actually, it was a flat number this year, so 4% I think is a very good number. Uh, one of the things that to me is, is in some of these projections, we only have a capital fund of $100,000. Uh, that, that kind of is a low number, but uh, that's a plug number in the sense that that would fund a uh, million dollars in capital if you needed to do that. Uh, but we, I think our number in the long term would be higher than that. Uh, and then just utility expenses and uh, other expenses, 2 and 3%. Uh, again, Five-year projections, I think, are very good for the township as long as we don't run into major tax appeals. Uh, I, I think overall uh, we are, uh, I think we have to plan for that right now, uh, especially with events over the last week or so. I think we've got to project down the road uh, over the next three to five years that we are going to have an effect on <coughs> the potential recession. So uh, we, we, that's got to be monitored on basically on a daily basis uh, to see where the markets are. I know the markets are taking another hit today. Uh, that's, those are things that we've got to watch. Uh, we, we, we had planned on introducing the budget tonight with a public hearing on the 20th. I got a late call from the auditor. Uh, the auditor is requesting that we do not introduce tonight. Uh, some things have occurred at the state over the last 48 hours, obviously, uh, and over the last uh, couple of weeks with some funding mechanisms, uh, one for the Garden State Trust, and the other is some of this um, coronavirus issue and how it's going to affect the state budget and how it, uh, there's potential additional funding for local municipalities due to the impact. So what we're requesting is, is that be, Madam uh, Clerk, would we table that or how would we, would we do that for this evening? We just right, we'll not act on it. And what we would look to do is introduce uh, at the next meeting once the auditor confirms with the state on some of these issues. Uh, but we're prepared to go. He called at the last minute and said, hey, let's wait. And there may be some extra money out there, so let's not tie ourselves up. Okay. We can get some extra funding. We'll take right. it. Any we'll questions? We'll take it. <laughs> Comments, I guess. Um, first of all, uh, I'd like to compliment the budget committee um, and, and yourself for, for putting together what amounts to be a great budget I and mean, we're fortunate as a township uh, when you can propose a budget with no additional burden on the residents um, that has seen a almost 11 million dollar reduction in debt uh, over the last uh, 14 years um, every department if you look across the board has held the line um, for the last since 2014 uh, we haven't really seen any significant cost from any one of the departments including public safety public works um, and I personally love the fact that we're not incurring debt on depreciating assets um, that they're being paid for out of the budget and that's the way it should be so um, all in all um, we're fortunate to be able to present this to, to the residents today and I just want to compliment the budget committee on a, on a job well done Thank you, Charlie. Thank Anyone you. Anyone else? Comments? Simon? I would only echo what he said. <clears throat> very good. Arch, thank you very much. You did a great job. Appreciate it. Um, so as was stated, we will not introduce tonight. We will introduce at the next meeting. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to grab on to some more money. That's always good. Uh, we'll move on to number four, discussions, formal action may be taken. Item A, Green Team and Senior Citizen Advisory Committee term length. Bart, you want to touch on this a little bit? This is, uh, this was requested by uh, Committeeman uh, Richard, and you want to, yeah. want to address it, sir? Okay. Number of people on the committees 
the last thought that one year was a short period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes that amount of time just to understand what's going on and meet all the people on the committee. So their request was to, to increase that to uh, two years. Uh -huh. The chairman of the committee would find that helpful also. <coughs> so I, Arch, and I, I don't know if you are familiar with this, but I, I believe that these that these committees were set as a one-year term for a reason. I believe that reason was to, um, <coughs> if they had a longer term, they could have budgets or they would be, they would be, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure on that one. In the, in the, in the statute, I mean, maybe the solicitor wants to step in, but you have different forms of boards and commissions and committees. Right in uh allowed by uh title 40 and uh you did this on the short term by resolution which was good for one year which means their terms could only go for one year but if you're looking to do uh, longer terms and create uh, some type of commissions uh then we'd have to look at some type of ordinance i think that's right they'd have to be established by ordinance because it would run longer than a one year than a one year right Okay. But you'd have to go through the ordinance process instead of doing it by resolution. Okay, but does it affect anything else? Uh, I, I don't think it would affect other, other things. It, you mean in terms of would they have to have their own budget or something? Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or discussion or? Um, I mean, what's it's it, it, it's saving? having to fill out a single page document to apply once a year? I mean, I, I'm... Uh, it gives the chairperson a little more uh, assuredness of who's going to be on the committee. <clears throat> and it's a more realistic period of time to allow the members to learn what's going on and contribute. So you're saying we cannot um, do this by resolution? It would have to be done by ordinance? Yes. Yeah, so what you would have to do is, is by ordinance, if these are not already codified in, in the township code, which I don't think they are if they're, if they're one year terms, you'd have to pass an ordinance uh, establishing these committees, similar to some of the other committees I think that have been established by ordinance, um, and setting the, the term length for members. Um, at the time they're appointed, they'd be appointed to a two year term or whatever term the committee decided. And then you could also decide, um, you know, if you're going to stagger terms or, or those sort of things, but it would have to be adopted into the township code. By ordinance. So basically, these are considered committees, and everything else is considered a board. It's different. Well, yeah, well, they, these are advisory. You have them set up as advisory committees right. now, so it would make them more formal. That probably also then be subject to the Open Public Meetings Act and, and some of the other. Yeah, they do realize all that, right? They don't have to be subject to public open public yeah, meetings. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think they, they would be. An ordinance, they do. Yes, they I do. think they would be if they were established by ordinance, and they. Um, if they're no longer, there's a difference between advisory committees um, and a lot of towns set up a mayor's advisory committee on whatever. Um, but if you're going to make them a formally adopted subcommittee or committee of the township, um, I think they probably would be then subject to the Open Public Meetings Act and some of the other more formal requirements. Okay, I don't think the members were aware of that requirement. That means we have to be taking minutes and. Yes. Sure, sure. We have to have, um, I believe, all the boards have a secretary. Yes, yes, yes that they work, do. but they get a stipend. somebody who records everything. Proper advertising. Yep. So we will incur a cost. Yes. I mean, with with that being said, I mean, I I would move um, to vote this down at this point. Um, and if it becomes an issue in the future, I mean, I don't think we definitely don't want to get into uh, creating more bureaucracy and especially um, having the requirement of, of incurring costs to record minutes because we've got to make sure they're recorded properly and then they are now subject to the Open Public Meetings Act, so. Mm -hmm. And then if we decide uh, uh, later on, we might want to look at this again. And I think it would be a good idea to have an, more of an open discussion with the board 
boards themselves and the Absolutely. chairman to uh, find out what the actual need would be to make that. I agree with that. So everybody's in uh, agreement not to make an act, take any action here tonight. I am. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we'll move on to 4B. Uh, 4B is temporary guidelines that um, our administrator has put forth because of the uh, coronavirus situation. Arch, if you'd like to expand on that a little bit. Yes, I would. Uh, what we basically did here was follow the model of the state. Uh, a lot of question, questions came up. What if, you know, uh, uh, a parent had to stay home with a child who's an employee? How do we charge time? How do we uh, address this, uh, obviously, for uh, impact, cri uh, impact on the crisis? Uh, and also uh, financial impacts. Uh, and what this basically does is it, it authorizes, the resolution authorizes the administration uh, to not charge employees sick time uh, if they are uh, required to stay home with a child uh, who doesn't have childcare or who is sick, uh, which I, th I think is, is a very fair approach to this situation. Uh, and uh, this was drawn up mostly for civil service communities throughout the state. Uh, what we did was take their model, uh, and actually I, I shipped it over to Atlantic City this morning because they, they wanted to look at it too. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's a very good approach uh, for treating our employees through this process. So basically it would leave it up to your discretion? Is that? Uh, no, no, it really, it, it authorizes it more than leaves it right. to my discretion. Okay, I got you. Okay, very good. Uh, you want to have any questions? Yeah. Um, so this is in a resolution form? Yes. What's your pleasure? I'll make a motion to pass that resolution. Second. We have a motion and second. Are there any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. <clears throat> we have a public hearing ordinance, uh, adoption of ordinances, a ordinance 1921-2020, an ordinance authorizing the sale of Lot 2, Block 615, 2.15 acres on Harding Highway, as shown on the tax map of the Township of Hamilton, and granting the owner or owners of said real property continuous to the same right to a prior refusal to purchase such land from the Township of Hamilton, County of Atlantic, State of New Jersey. This is a public hearing. Uh, you want to give a little background on this, Arch, before we... This is basically uh, with adjoining properties. If, if there's land that's, that's owned by uh, the township, you can uh, sell it to the adjoining homeowners. The best part about this, it puts it back on the tax rolls yep. uh, and increases the value of the homeowner's property. Okay, very good. This is a public hearing. Anybody want to speak? Motion to close public portion. Second. A motion is second to close the public portion. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Chair will recognize adoption of this ordinance. Committee? I have someone. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. We have a second for an adoption of ordinance 1921-2020. Rita, can we get a roll call vote, please? Yes. 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 Thank you. B, ordinance 1922-2020, an ordinance amending exhibit A, section one, article two of chapter 66 of the code of township of Hamilton, providing for the maximum number of employees. Uh, this is something, this was what we visited last meeting. This is uh, simply just changing, doing away with the deputy chief's position and creating a lieutenant's position. It's not an addition, it's not an actual addition to uh, the amount of employees. This is a public hearing. Anybody from the public like to speak? Motion to close public portion. Second. Motion is second to close public portion. <coughs> Are there any questions? <coughs> Hearing no questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. I've got a question. Do we actually have to have an ordinance every time we make an adjustment in personnel, that even though it doesn't involve any increase, that increase? 
you, you have to have an ordinance because the, the township code has a certain amount of authorized uh, positions in each rank. So if we're adjusting what's, you have to change that by ordinance, yes. Because of the title. Correct. Okay. Very good. I'll move 1922-2020, especially since it saves us uh, I'll money. Second. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Excuse aye. me. I'm sorry. Rita, could you give me a roll call vote, please? Yes. 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 Thank you. Introduction of ordinances. Public <coughs> hearing will be held April 6, 2020. A, an ordinance 1924-2020. An ordinance authorizing the sale of lots 6 and 7 in block 366. It's a 125 by 100 lot at 1382 Arlington Avenue, as shown on the tax map of Hamil the Township of Hamilton, and granting, granting the owner and owners of said real, real property contiguous to the same right to prior refusal to purchase said such land in the Township of Hamilton, Atlant County of Atlantic, and the state of New Jersey. This is a Pretty much a straightforward land sale similar to the other one we talked about correct mayor okay <clears throat> committee what's your pleasure i'll move the ordinance second we have a motion and second are there any questions hearing no questions all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. all those opposed the ayes have it b ordinance 1925 2020 an ordinance authorizing the sale of lot 26 in block 344, 334, a 50 by 100 lot in 319 Mobile Avenue, as shown on the tax map of the Township of Hamilton, and granting the owner and owner said realty, said real property contiguous to the state, the same right to a prior refusal to purchase such land as the Township of Hamilton, County of Atlantic, and State of New Jersey. Same thing. Again, this is straightforward similar. land sale. I'll make that I'll motion. Move. I'll second. We have a motion and second. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, seven, award of bids, contracts, and change orders. A, resolution to award a contract to Delta Dental Insurance for the period of April, tw April 1st, 2020 to February 28, 2022, not to exceed $250,000. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I would make a recommendation that we um, make this a one-year contract with a not to exceed of 125000 Okay. An effort to uh, look for... Well, I, I think that gives us the opportunity to revisit this again next year and look for additional savings. Okay. Very good. Um, can we keep continue to move the resolution with these changes? Yeah, we just do a motion to amend... We need a motion to amend. You can just, you can just take the original the resolution okay. with Mr. Means change. Okay. We'll okay. Take care of it more. So, would you like to make that motion, Charles? I'll make that motion. I'll second it with the changes. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Hearing no question, Rita, could we get a roll call vote, please? Mr. Payne. Yes. Mr. Gishard. Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Catawi? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. Oh, yes, and Terry. Thank you. B, authorize an annual maintenance contract with Pro Phoenix Corp. not to exceed $43,982.56 for software maintenance for the period of 1120 to 123120. I mean, this is something obviously that's is very important. I'm just, I, I got a question on. Um, why are we awarding this now in March and it started at the beginning of the year? There were some delays in process and understanding what process had to be done uh, because this is proprietary software, uh, which is a continuation of an existing software program we have for public safety within the police department. Uh, so it was just not done. Uh, it was a lack of understanding on how it needed to be processed and got delayed. A question do we have somebody from that company on site here no we do not they have a they have a local chief they have a local guy um the services the the three towns or four towns yes 
this is a this is a uh, software program that's actually shared by I know Galloway has it, uh, Egg Harbor Township, us, uh, and I know that because of that, Malika would use it, and Egg Harbor City would use the the program. Uh, so it, it it is a um, a, a great concept by law enforcement in the local area to have sh you know shared software program like this uh, and, and I know that uh, Pro Phoenix put a lot of effort into maintaining it uh, for the region. Does the agreement call for a response in a certain amount of time? Yes, sir. So to answer your question, um, usually when something happens with Pro Phoenix that we, is it on? Yeah. All right. if, if something happens with the uh, Pro Phoenix software, usually they're just a phone call away and we can talk to them and they can correct it remotely if there's an issue. Um, it just happened probably about two weeks ago. There was an issue with it. We got on the phone with them. We went back and forth with our IT person and there's and they corrected the situation and we went back online and everything was fine. They're very responsive to our needs. Okay, thank you. And I might add one more thing that even though we were out of contract with them, they still were willing to help us out, so. Okay, very good. <clears throat> um, I, I just wanna mention, I mean, uh, our, uh, Mr. Administrator, I mean, it just seems to be a pattern of being out of contract on contracts and um, I hope that's something that you um, address moving forward um, to prevent that from happening. I, I certainly will. And Archie, I also uh, I remember when we approved the Pro Phoenix, I don't remember the discussion on the uh, maintenance period being that high. Is this something changed? Uh, That, that is the fallacy of purchasing software programs, proprietary software programs. What happens is once you purchase the initial um, components of it, you know, you must maintain it. And a lot of times um, those are not projected in the cost, uh, the annual updates. And, that, and, and I will tell you that software companies have you over the barrel uh, on proprietary software and what they can charge. Uh, because you you don't have a lot of choices, uh, and it does create a problem. Chief, was that, was that projected to be that high? Do you know on an annual cost basis, or do you, do you remember? I can't speak to the past, but um, in the last couple you, of years, you can come. it has been around the same price. So yeah. it hasn't gone up uh, considerably. Thank you. A lot of times they may give you a deal when you go in for the first couple of years yeah, at a lock rate, right. and then after that, it's... They got you. It's a good program, though, so it's yes. It, it does what we it's need very good. to do, and then some. Uh, what's your pleasure? Committee? I'll move seven B. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Rita, can we get a roll call vote, please? Yes, Mr. Kane. Yes. Mr. Gishard. Yes. Mr. Kurtz. Yes. Mr. Vitale. Yes. Mayor Shanker. Yes. C, resolution authorizing change order number two to action janitorial for additional deep cleaning in public areas for the term of 90 days, not to exceed $2,549.94. I believe this is pretty much self-explanatory. This is related to the, the, the recent events. Yep. So we, we uh, um, I say we, the township has taken uh, the proper steps to try and make everybody safe. Um, I'll make a motion to award that. Second. A motion and a second. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions, Rita, can we get a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kane? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mr. Kirk? Yes. Mr. Vitale? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. Thank you. D, a resolution appointing the Bond Council for the year of 2020. So those of you who don't remember, the Bond Council and, and Ida Me, the general appraiser, they came in too high. Uh, we put them back out and uh, they came back uh, more acceptable. I'll move uh, Joel Fleischman um, as bond counsel for the year 2020. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? 
Uh, seeing no questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. E, resolution appointing certified general appraiser for the year 2020. Do we have a name on this? Yes, Martin, I believe. Is Martin Martin was number one. Mm -hmm. I'll move Martin Appraisal Associates. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. <clears throat> 7F, change order number three, West Jersey Avenue for $7,875. Um, can you want to give a little expansion on that? I believe it was for some stonework and some swales that had to be made. Yeah, there were some uh, changes that the engineer came across that would, would actually improve the project a little bit. Okay. Uh, and you're, you know, when you, anytime you do a project like you run into minor issues, uh, $7,000 change order for this is not much. And okay. I think it really helps. The Very good. Now, do, are we, I know West Jersey Avenue had some state money in it. It's this. Is this, are we going back to the state for this money or is this coming out of I, our? It depends on how they break it down for the payment. I'll, I'll double check on that for you, Mayor. Okay. But. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Committee, what's your pleasure? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Uh, are there any questions? Hearing no questions, Rita, can we get a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kane? Yes. Mr. Bichard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Vitale? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. Oh, yes, and carried. We move on to number eight, consent agenda. I'll move the consent agenda items uh, 8A, B, and B through, uh, uh, looks like it's uh, B through E. We have a motion. I'll second it. We have a second. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Nine personnel resolution appointing Arch Liston as authorized EPL hotline contact for the ACMJIF. I'll make that motion. We have a second. Second. Okay. So, Arch, I got to ask the question: EPL hotline. What exactly? Employee. Is it? That's when you have employee you. personnel questions. Uh, what you do call up? They have a free hotline. You can call for uh, advice from the attorneys at the Jeff. Okay. Very good. Um, we have a motion and second. Are there any questions? Uh, I think since it's personnel, we got to do a roll call. Yes. Rita, roll call, please. Mr. Kane. Yes. Mr. Gishar. Yes. Mr. Kurtz. Yes. Mr. Vitale. Yes. Mayor Shanker. Yes. B, resolution appointing Lisa Marcolongo to alternate fund commissioner for the ACM GIF. So moved. Second. A motion and second. Are there any questions? Rita, can we get a roll call vote, please? Yes. Mr. Kane. Yes. Mr. Gishar. Yes. Mr. Kurtz. Yes. 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 Mayor Shanker. Yes. Thank you. C. Resolution appointing James Grace as full time communications officer for the police department at a salary of $42,086.47, effective date to be determined. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Is this to refill the position, mm -hmm. obviously? Okay, thank you. Uh, Rita, can we get a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kane? Yes. Mr. Gishar? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mr. Vitale? Yes. Mayor Schenker? Yes. All yes and carry. Resolution appointing Maida Stewart as a part time communications officer for the police department at a rate of 1656 per hour, effective date to be determined. So this, moved. Is, this is also filling a vacant position. Yes. Yes. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? 
Hearing no questions, can we get a roll call vote, please? Yes, Mr. Kane. Yes. Mr. Bouchard. Yes. Mr. Kurtz. Yes. Mr. Vitale. Yes. Mayor Shanker. Yes. All yes and carry. <clears throat> e, resolution appointing Chris Ayer <clears throat> as an information technician for the police department at the salary of $62,000, effective March 9th, 2020. So moved. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Do we have any questions? Yes. What is the information technician? IT. Is that an IT position? Yes. It says the present uh, IT, like an assistant IT person. So this is a position that was filled due to the fact that we had someone retire. And they moved someone up and somebody up yes. and we're back filling a position. <clears throat> um, we have a motion, second. Read it, read a roll call vote, please. Yes, Mr. Kane. Yes. Mr. Bichard. Yes. Mr. Kurtz. Yes. Mr. Vitale. Yes. Mayor Shanker. Yes. F, resolution appointing Larry, Gary Clune as a full-time police officer at the salary of $76,241, effective date to be determined. So I move. Second. A motion is second. Are there any questions? So just to be clear, this is an officer that we just hired in order to fill backfill positions from the um, deputy chief retiring. Yes. And we have a date now, right? I can put that in the record. Yes. The effective date will be April the 6th. April 6th. Very good. Okay. So we have motion. We have a second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Kane. Yes. Mr. Bichard. Yes. Mr. Kurtz. Yes. Mr. Talley. Yes. Mayor Shanker. Yes. Right. Ten approvals under A, minutes for March 2nd, 2020 regular meeting. I'll move the minutes. I'll second it. <clears throat> we have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. B, bills. Bill list total $1,833,744.32. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions, can we get a roll call vote, please, Rita? Mr. Kane? Yes. Mr. Bichard? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Tally. Yes. Mayor Shanker. Yes. Well, yes and Thank you. We'll move to number 11, reports. Mr. Administrator. Uh, just a real quick update. Uh, we've had to take some action most recently uh, after the governor declared a state of emergency and obviously the, at the federal levels. Uh, one of the things that we have done uh, in the building is that uh, the building is being um, locked down uh, we are still providing services, uh, a couple things people, people can call and they can make an, a, an appointment, uh, they can come to the building and our people will meet them out uh, by the court out, out in the front and we will service their needs. Uh, secondly, if um, they could, if someone walks into the building and they need assistance and we, we can call down, the, the court is working with us, they will call down and we'll uh, send someone to provide whatever uh, assistance they may need in construction or, or planning or so forth. Uh, we just don't want people roaming through the building um, that may expose our people. Uh, secondarily, we have uh, come up with contingency planning for the building uh, and have done some altered scheduling uh, and where some, uh, especially in the courts, uh, there'll be some uh, offset times when they'll be working during the daytime, the other ones will be working alternate days, uh, but the, everything will be fully staffed uh for assistance it's just the fact that we don't want to expose a whole, our whole workforce uh to the virus if it does occur uh if if half of the the staff gets exposed they'll be out of service uh, under the quarantine and we'll still be able to maintain services uh so we're t we're looking at on a daily basis how we can best uh meet the, the demands of the the issue and if if there is an exposure we, we may have to take a, a different stance uh, but we feel right now, uh, as you see some of the signs on the doors and some of the things that we're doing, uh, that we're just trying to uh, prevent the um, public and the employees from both being exposed to each other if something does occur. Uh, I've never seen actions like this in my experience in government before, but I think we have to do it uh, to minimize the exposure, as you've seen in some of the things we've done with the building today. Uh, we're just keeping our social distances. We've moved to the solicitor over there. Uh, so we're just taking those kind of actions to do the proper thing. And uh, these, these will continue in the township. 
Thank you. Appreciate it. Anybody have any questions? Move on. Mr. Solicitor, do you have anything? No, thank you, Mayor. Mr. Engineer. I see they kicked you out altogether. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't right, Steve. It's a real distance. It's, right. it's not right. <laughs> just two quick items. Um, this CarMax redevelopment plan is, is scheduled for the next planning board meeting this coming Thursday night for a consistency determination. That, that's the next step in the process. Mm -hmm. After Thursday night, with the consistency determination, it will be back to the board's council to make that CarMax redevelopment plan in order. Second thing I just want to report on is the uh, Lake Lennon P. Dam Committee meeting. The next one is scheduled for April 6th. Uh, Committeeman Patali has taken a lot of interest in the Dam Committee, and, and I, we, we've been in constant communication with the county. They've agreed to meet with us once a month. We have a schedule. We re reserve a, a location once a month. Just want to report that we will hold the county to uh, the wishes of uh, Committeeman Patali. Continue to have these meetings with the county and the Dam Committee keep this project moving ahead. That, that's all I have to report. Very good. Thank you, Steve. Do we have any questions for the engineer? Thank you, Carl, by the way. Appreciate your diligence on this. Uh, with that, we'll move to count Township Committee members. Carl Patali. Um, Jeff Day from uh, Resource Renewal was supposed to be here tonight to give an update on the landfill closure. Um, he did send a uh, an email out with with an attachment basically going over everything and, and i really didn't want to there's some things in there i'm not too hip on so i don't i don't want to overstep my grounds here and i'll wait for him hopefully he can if we have another meeting <laughs> in two weeks hopefully he can come and uh and go over that because there, there is a lot of uh questions coming out about that uh what's going on um i know some some homeowners are, are getting some high levels of of different of mercury or whatever and, and and he's he's looking into things and, and figuring out where all this is coming from so we'll leave that up to him to uh to tell us what's happening and, and where we stand with that um with this whole with everything that's going on with this coronavirus um it, it's very impressive with what's going on with our township employees and how well they're responding to this and how it's 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 obviously it's a, it's a fluid situation it's changing um, there were emails kicked back and forth over the weekend. Uh, there's obvious, the communication within our township is, is, is quite amazing and it's, it's very impressive. Um, so I feel very, very good about where we are. I have full faith in, in our police department, in our in emergency management, in, in Brett and his crew and everybody. I, I think we're gonna get through this well um, I think the worst is yet to come, but uh, we'll get through this, and I, I'm, I'm feeling very confident about that. Uh, and with all that being said, look out for your neighbors, look out for your friends, your family. Um, I don't think it's the virus that's going to get us. I think it's going to be people out of work. It's going to be people hurting for, for putting food on the table. So let, let's, let's take care of our, uh, of our families and friends in this township, and that's all. Very good. Thank you, Carl. John? I echo the comments about the virus uh, that uh, Carl mentioned. Uh, between uh, it impacts everybody. It's uh, becoming uh, aware that uh, from big business down to small mom and pop operations, it's, uh, it's going to be an issue. Uh, and then uh, it was heartwarming to hear the uh, county uh, at least be able to explain that they're going to address the concerns. Uh, of the local businesses and how to get around the downtown that's very important uh but when you put the the, the virus situation and the bridge closure and everything together it's certainly going to be an impact uh, on everybody in the uh, downtown neighborhood even more so uh so uh we just want to make sure that uh we really keep close tabs on the uh how the county actually acts getting the information through with our police department to make sure that the businesses, uh, it, people do understand that the businesses uh, down Main Street are open and ha can have access. That would be very important. And that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, John. Charlie. I, I'll just the same, I'll echo uh, the comments of our uh, two committeemen regarding um, uh, this crisis we're facing. Um, and uh, Steve, I would just uh, mention 
the, the businesses on Weymouth Road also, um, that we, we may want to commun uh, communicate the opposite way to let, let the public know that those businesses are still accessible. I've been in contact with the clerk's office. I, I don't want to miss any businesses. I've been in contact with the clerk's office, and I'm glad you said something tonight. I've been in contact with the uh, Mays Landing Merchants Association. I, I, I just don't want to miss anybody, and I'm glad you said something. That's all I have, Mr. May. Thank you, sure. Ronnie. Well, like everybody else, the uh, virus is of concern to me, not only from a health perspective, but also financial. It's going to hit the state and the federal government. It's going to reduce revenue, and it's going to make it more difficult for the municipalities to uh, fund their budgets. I also wonder, from a uh, township perspective, what additional things we might want to have to do. I know that the administrator has done some extra cleaning, or has some extra cleaning done. But I wonder if there are any requirements for that, any specifications that we have to meet from a cleaning perspective. And also, we need to make sure we're separated by six feet. I notice we're a little more spread apart today, and we want to make sure we do that in the future, and make sure that the people sitting in the audience are separated also. So it's something for us to think about and offer leadership if it's appropriate. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rodney. Um, I just, you know, of course, the virus is a, uh, is a big problem. Um, but first, I'd like to comment on the, the budget. Um, Arch, you did a great job. Um, we had conversation when Arch first got here about where we thought this could go, and he took it there, and, and I'm very happy with what we've been able to do. Um, move some things around and, and we're able to get a little more creative and, and make this a, a better budget not just for this year like you said but for the years to come and that's how we have to start looking at this we can't we can't take on a budget year to year we have to take it on for five years and and hopefully it helps us to mitigate through the little pitfalls like we had a couple years ago so strong budget the town's in great shape um, and that comes from a lot of years of of good planning and, and hard work um, when Arch first started, I actually met with Arch the week before he was officially started here. And uh, we met, and, and the first thing he said to me, he says, you know, we're going to have to do something about this coronavirus. So he was thinking about this even before he started. And I got to tell you, you've done a great job along with all the folks in the township, Brett and your, and your folks and, and all the people in town hall um, for understanding what needed to be done and, and, and carrying it out. And, helping the people, the folks that want to come into this building have to be kind and understanding that, you know, this is the way it is and, and hopefully uh, we'll get through this. Um, you know, unfortunately, I agree with Carl. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. So, uh, you know, please let us know if there's somebody out there that needs help. You know, let us know. Contact Town Hall. Contact the Police Department. Whatever the case may be, please let us know if you need help and we will do the best we can to assist. So with that, I'm going to open it up to public comment. Anybody in the public like to speak? Yes. Good evening, committee. Jenny Ayers, 4812 Green Ash Lane. But I want to speak to you tonight on behalf of the MUA. We're proposing some um, limited hours at our Ken Skull office, uh, 8 to noon, Monday through Wednesdays, and uh, 1 to 5, Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're also looking at proposing um, a limited field operations. So we'll still maintain the water and the sewer and the pumps and the things that we need to maintain, but not necessarily change, out, change outs at the home level until we get past this crisis. If there's an emergency, we will certainly take care of that. We're also gonna limit the amount of nature and contact to our customers as much as we possibly can. We care about our customers just like you do. We thank you for what you're doing. We're looking forward to continue to serve the community. I'd like to send, when this is finalized, the information to committee or arch so we could put it on your website as well as ours we're also going to run an ad in the current we want to get the word out as much as possible we're here to serve we ask customers who currently come to the office to pay try doing pay online through their bank at this juncture so we can limit the amount of exposure we have to everybody i work at the community college we're dealing with this as well we've canceled a lot of events we're in this together as a community and i look forward to working with you all thank you again for what you're doing thank you very much Anyone else in the public like to speak? Move Motion to close. to close public portion. Second. Second. 
A motion is second to close public portion. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Number 13, we will adjourn to executive session to discuss the sales shared services agreement, the Township of Hamilton, <clears throat> potential sales services agreement. Say that six times fast. And Estel Manor, Weymouth Township contract negotiations. This has to do with the uh, court system, their court system. <coughs> so we need a motion to adjourn to uh, executive session. Don't make that motion. The second. motion is second. Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, ayes have it. Be it, resolved. Stay yeah. safe. be it resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Hamilton that this meeting be adjourned to an executive session to discuss the following matters which are exempt from public discussion pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law, Shared Service Agreement, Township of Hamilton and Estelle Manor and Weymouth Township contract negotiations. Be it further re resolved that the governing body, Archer, are we coming back out or you don't know for sure? There will be no formal action. Will not reconvene will, will in not be formal session. action and it should not last more than five minutes. Be it further resolved the results of this executive session shall be made known as soon as the basis for confidentiality is no longer confidential. Thank you. We're off the record.